Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Stahl. Hi, I'm Meyer Stahl, the pastor of the Southern New Mexico Church of God, bringing you the program, What is Truth? Today's subject is, Are God's Holy Days Prophetic? Are they prophecies? Do we find those prophecies in the book of Leviticus? Now that might be a strange place to look for prophecies. But before we get started, we have two very important booklets we want to share with you today. The first is God's Holy Days. Did you know that God has holy days that reveal his plan of salvation. At the bottom of the booklet, it says, read this booklet. Check it out in your Bible. You may be surprised. I'm sure you will be. Remember what the wise writer of Proverbs said. He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame unto him. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13. The second booklet is, Why Were You Born? Why are you living today? Why were you born? Do you have a purpose? And it says right here at the bottom of the booklet, do you really know why you were born? Do you realize God has a purpose being worked out, I might add, for you? Most fail to understand that purpose. Read this booklet, you will be surprised. You can have these two booklets, they're absolutely free. We never ask the public for money. We never send literature to people unless they ask for it. And uh, the phone number is 575-650-7359. Call today and we'll send it out to you right away. So, uh, so now let's get started with the program. We're going to turn in our Bibles to Leviticus chapter 23. All of God's holy days are listed in Leviticus chapter 23. Now, they're type and anti-type. Let me explain that to you. Type means what we find in the Old Testament, the prophecy. The anti-type is not against type. If the anti-type is what we find in the New Testament, which is the fulfillment of those prophecies in the Old Testament. So here we go. Uh, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 2. And uh, Moses is told to speak to the children of Israel and say unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord. Now, I want you to notice that. These are not the feasts of the Jews, not the feasts of the Israelites, not the feast of the Hebrews. This is the feast of the Lord. They belong to the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. They belong to God. Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day, this is the direct article, the seventh day is the direct article again, the Sabbath 
of rest, a holy convocation, you shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord. It belongs to the Lord in all your dwellings. He keeps repeating this because people keep saying it's the feast of the Jews. And he keeps repeating it. Verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord. Again, even holy convocations which you shall proclaim in their seasons. Now, we're going to start with the Sabbath. So let's go right now to... Uh, let's go right now to uh, the uh, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. 2 Peter 3, verse 8. Now, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's God's wish. God's wish is that people won't perish in the lake of fire, but they will repent and come into his kingdom and come into his family. Now, the important verse here is the preceding verse. Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. We'll stop there. I'm going to explain it. God has seven days in the week. Six days man works. The seventh day, man is supposed to rest. Now, that's good for you. That's good for you to rest up and you regenerate. It's like a battery. The battery has to be recharged. And you recharge yourself. So, six days, six millennial days, that's six thousand years God has given man his opportunity to do his own thing. Okay? He chooses. Man chooses his own government. He chooses his own law systems. He chooses his own judge systems. His own penal systems his own educational systems, his own financial systems, his own military systems. He fights his own wars. And God have basically has hands off, except when it suits his purpose, for 6,000 years. Now, the 7,000 years Man rests and God works. Well, let's see how that works now. We're going to go to the book of uh, Revelation chapter 20. Chapter 20, Revelation 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Why? Why did he do this? Well, the Bible explains. Let's just read on. And cast him in to the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him 
that he should deceive the nations no more. So he won't be able to deceive people anymore till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. I'll stop there. People always ask me why, uh, if you got him bound up for a thousand years, why would you release him? Well, God's not done with him. God uses Satan. Satan doesn't use God. So we'll go back to verse 4, and we'll understand God is going to rule this earth for the 7,000-year period. 7,000-year period. Let's look at it. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. Who is them? And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. They were beheaded. They lost their heads. For the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ, with Christ, a thousand years. So Christ is going to rule for a thousand years, and those who are, who belong to Christ, who are baptized, who are, who have repented, they're baptized, and they receive God's Holy Spirit, they will rule with him. Now, let's go on now uh, to the next verse. That's Revelation 11, verse 15. 11, verse 15 says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying the kingdoms, that's the governments of this world, are become the kingdoms of or the governments of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. We're going to stop there and explain that. The first thousand years is a contrast. It's a contrast between man ruling himself for 6,000 years and God coming after the 6,000 years are up, ruling for 1,000 years as a contrast to show the peace, the beauty, and uh, to show the exact opposite of man's rule here on earth. It's going to be absolutely beautiful, peaceful. There'll be no more wars. And everything is going to be perfect. It's going to be the perfect place to live. Now we'll go to the next scripture. And uh, and uh, if you could follow along with me in your Bible, the next scripture is back to Leviticus 23. It says, verse 4, even the, these are the feasts of the Lord. So God enumerates the feasts, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. In the 14th day of the first month at even, that's at sunset, is the Lord's Passover. Did you notice that? It says the Lord's Passover. It doesn't say the Jewish Passover, the uh, Hebrew Passover, the Israelite Passover. It says it's the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month, that's the next day, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat 
unleavened bread. And the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. And here in the second half of verse 8, it says, In the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. We're going to take a short break, and I'm going to explain the Passover and the seven days of unleavened bread to you when we get back. Please don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. In case you tuned in late, we are on YouTube. All you need to do is go to YouTube and uh, type in What is Truth with Meyer Stahl? And you can watch this program and uh, watch it in full. And you can watch up to over 500 different topics. Pick any topic you want to watch that, uh, that you might be interested in. And you can watch a half an hour of that program. And uh, we'd, we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. All you need to do is call us at area code 57 five six five zero seven three five nine or you could email me you could email me at myerstall at gmail dot com and I'd be happy to mail email you back. So let's go on. We're going to look at Matthew chapter twenty six. And here it says, And it came to pass, verse 1, It came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. Remember, we talked about the Passover in Leviticus chapter 23. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. We'll stop there. Now, God could have chose any other day, 364 other days for Jesus Christ to be crucified. Why did he pick the Passover day? It's very simple. The Passover day is a prophecy, and it's back in the Old Testament. It's fulfilled in the New Testament by Jesus Christ himself. He became the lamb. He took the place of the lamb that was slaughtered. The blood was uh, brushed on the doorpost and the lintel, and uh, the angel of death passed over those houses where the blood was put on, the, uh, on those houses. And the firstborn were preserved. And the houses that didn't have the blood, the firstborn of the people, mostly all Egyptians, they all died, and the firstborn of their animals died. So this was fulfilled in the New Testament when Jesus Christ was crucified. The Lamb of God was crucified on the Passover day. Now we're going to look at the next uh, holy day. And the next holy day, we're going to look at uh, Leviticus chapter 23, and we're going to look at, uh, well, let's look at Matthew chapter 26, verse 1. We read, we read that, and it came to pass 
that Jesus had finished all these sayings. I'm reading it again. He said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. You know that. Okay. Now let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. In verse 7, 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7. Now, following the Passover are seven days of unleavened bread when the Jews and those of the churches of God who are keeping the Passover and the days of unleavened bread put leaven out of their houses and eat leavened products and they eat uh, unleavened bread, or we know it as matzos. And it says here, for the, uh, for the Gentiles, this is a Gentile church. Corinthians were Gentiles. Verse 7, that's 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. Paul is telling them that you may be a new lump as you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. What feast is he talking about? He's talking about the feast that lasts seven days of unleavened bread. That's the feast he's talking about. Not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So we'll stop there and I'll explain that. The early church was keeping the Passover and the days of unleavened bread. It wasn't until 321 A.D., that Emperor Constantine had changed the holy days. He changed the, the Sabbath to Sunday. And 325 A.D., he changed Passover to Easter. So for three, over 300 years, the church was keeping these holy days. The next scripture here is uh, Leviticus 23 and verse 15. Uh, it says here, And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Let me explain that to you. There was a wave sheaf offering that they waved the sheaf of first fruits. So they would wave the sheaf of first fruits to be accepted by the Lord. Well, from that day, you count, that took place during the days of unleavened bread. Those seven days of unleavened bread would be a Sabbath. There would be a Sabbath there. So from the morrow after the Sabbath, that's the day after the Sabbath, which is a Sunday, you count 50 days and you end up on a Sunday. And that Sunday is the day that we call Pentecost. Now in the Old Testament, it was called the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of First Fruits because uh, you would bring an early harvest. There were two harvests in the land of Israel. There was one in the spring to the early summer, and then there was one in the fall. It was called the Feast of Tabernacles. And that the Feast of Tabernacles was a much bigger feast, much more fruit, much more grains, much more vegetables, and so forth. Okay, let's read on here. 
verse 16. Even unto the morrow, that's the next day, after the seventh Sabbath. So you have seven Sabbaths, seven Saturdays, and the morrow after the seventh Saturday is a Sunday. Shall you number 50 days? Okay, now down to verse, down to verse 21, it says, And you shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be a holy convocation unto you. You shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever. God says it's going to be a statute forever. We're going to keep it in the millennium. We're going to keep it forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. We'll stop there. Well, this is really very simple. There were two holy days that were fulfilled, that were prophecies out of the Old Testament. The first holy day was the Passover day when Jesus Christ was crucified. That was the first one. The second one was the Feast of First Fruits or the Feast of Weeks, and we find that being fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. Now, this is a series. It might be as much as four programs. Please don't miss any of these programs because they continue on to explain God's holy days and how they're prophecies. Please don't miss any of them. So if you do, you could go back on YouTube and just type in what is truth with Meyer Stahl and re you could read it, you could watch it on YouTube. Uh, now, uh, why don't you send away or call us rather than send away, call us at area code 575-650-7359. Why don't you do that now? And we'll be happy to send you these booklets for free. We never ask the public for money. Don't worry that we're going to ask you for any money. We're not going to do that. God's holy days, did you know that God has holy days that reveal his plan of salvation and the booklet, Why Were You Born? And you could have these two booklets absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. We're happy to send them to you. Well, until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth? with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessing.